Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever in the world you're watching from. It's such a delight to welcome you into God's house today. My name is Pastor Muredi Wanjao, Pastor M, Senior Pastor of Mavuno Church. And it's my honor to just uh, welcome you to, to church today. Uh, and uh, wherever you are, I mean, if you're watching from your house, if you're watching from your office, whether you're on the road, wherever you are, uh, I want to ask you to just do something really special right now. Just take a moment and fill out the form. You can see the URL on the screen, Mavuno at Home. And what happens is every week when you fill this out, it helps us know where you're praying, where you're watching from, uh, who you're with. And just gives us a, a sense as your pastors how to pray for you, how to support you uh, during the week. And so uh, please just take a moment. It won't take, it just takes a few seconds to fill that out. You can actually do it right now. And uh, just let us know who you are. Uh, if you're from a different campus, a particular campus, and you're watching from home today, uh, we're glad you're here. Please fill it out and just write whatever campus you, you usually go to. If you are part of the online team, the congregation, and I'm so grateful for the home congregation, the online congregation, uh, please write Mavuno online. And if you're a guest today, you can also just indicate that I'm a visitor and we'd just be happy to pray for you uh, this week. Now, um, one of the things I want to just uh, highlight as we get into our service is uh, every Wednesday night we have what we call family night. And if you've never come for family night, you, you, you're you missing out. Uh, it's, it's when we really just uh, uh, come to hear as a family of Mavuno Church what God is saying to us through His Word. So we actually take the Word we preach on Sunday many of the times and we just have a conversation about a real conversation. And maybe uh, you're, you're, you're able to join us this week. It's every 5.30 uh, p.m. Uh, East African time. We would love to invite you uh, to come and to be part of it. Uh, now, as I want to pray for us as we give our tithes and our offerings. And you know, one of the things that it really strikes me as I think about giving uh, this week is the fact that, you know, the biggest way that we show love, the biggest way that we worship God is through our giving. Uh, you read through the scriptures and you'll be amazed to find that there's no time when people showed love to God or worship God and there were no gifts involved. It's just one of the ways that we, it's, it's actually the main way that we worship God as you read through the scriptures and people gave their gifts to God. And, and, and it's, it's, it's part of God's love language. I believe that as we give towards His work, He's honored by us doing that. He, do, he does that Himself. If, you, if you've ever read John 3.16, the most famous scripture in, this, in the Bible, it says, For God so loved the world that He did what? He gave. And this is, this is, this is we, we show our love through our giving. And many of you have given over the years so generously, shown your love uh, for God's work. And that's how we as a church are able to be a blessing to the world around us uh, through the gifts that you give. And so thank you for your generosity. And as you give now, I just want to speak a blessing over you uh, as you prepare to give. Father, thank you for this congregation. Thank you for this family that is Mavuno Church. Thank you that over the years, different people here, many people here, families, individuals, have given consistently, have given faithfully towards the work of the gospel here. And because of them, families have been changed. People have given their lives to Jesus. Marriages have been saved. The poor have been fed. Lord, you've allowed us to do many things because of the generosity of your people. And right now, Lord, I just pray that even as we show you our love through our giving, that, Lord, you would bless every, every pocket that gives, every hand that gives, that, Lord, you would replenish, that, Lord, you would continue to protect us, you would continue to cover us. Uh, just through your own generosity, Lord, your love for us, that you would continue to bless us, that we can be a blessing. And, Lord, even as we come towards listening to your word now, we pray that, Father, you would just speak to us through your word, uh, convict us, bless us, help us to hear you, Help us to understand your purpose for us. And I know that, Lord, you have a special word for every person listening. And I pray that, Lord, you would speak, that we would hear. We love you, Jesus, and we bless you. For we pray these things in the mighty and the matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus. And God's people say it together. Amen. Bro, but then let's get that Ulipata promotion job. Congrats, bro. Promotion Gani, I'm going to kazi next week. Allah, Kwani, what happened? We got into a serious fight with the HR. Again, he and I don't see eye to eye on anything, you know. Me no wanna, like, I'm going to just offer him a resignation letter next week, you know. But then I'm supposed to tell you episode two of my baby mama drama. Okay, I'm listening. Let me tell you, this lady has been calling me every day for the past two weeks. Back at 12 p.m. midnight. Sijui mara, sijui pesa ya daipa iko api. Sijui mtoto atakula tishu imeisha. You know, Baka, I'm wondering, like, is there a river somewhere? Kuna mto flani, watu na chota pesa? Ni bebe karaizangu ni ende, you know? Like, because I don't know what she expects me to do. 
Bro, this is how I would solve this problem. Please don't say anything stupid. Unazima simu. Unapanda SGR unaenda Mombasa. MIA 2 months tuone tatupeleka wapi? Wow, genius. Wonderful plan. I'm so sure nothing will go wrong. Bro, potea 2 months inaitwa character development. And what about the kid? Huh? What are you going to do about the kid? Okay, look, bro. This this guy needs our help. Okay, we have to decide. Okay, mister, I have the answer to everything. Have you forgotten that we have our own problems? Huh? And why can't we just have a conversation with this guy without him bringing up his problems? No, we don't have to be perfect or to know everything to support our friend, okay? Look, how about we try this? Why don't we tell him that we're going to share with him the contacts of like people who might be interested in his skills, you know? So that if he leaves his job, he has something else to do, you know? And then maybe we can offer to pray for him for the other issues. Bro, look. I may not have all the answers, okay? But how about we do this? I can share to you all the contacts of all the people I know who might use your skills, you know. Do you have a job, you know, at least you have options, you know. And then maybe I can pray for you for all this other stuff that you're dealing with, you know. For real? Wow, thanks, bro. You're a true friend. You're a hero, man. Me, a hero? Nah, unlikely. Welcome to church. I'm so glad you're here with us today. Uh, my goodness, my name is Pastor M, Pastor Maridi Wanjao, Senior Pastor of Mavuno Church. And I'm so glad that every one of you, wherever you're watching from, whether you're watching from home, whether you're watching from the office, whether you're watching from the road, uh, that you chose to join us today and worship with us. Now, uh, we're going through uh, an exciting series. Uh, it's called Unlikely Heroes. We're looking at the lives, uh, the kind of unlikely people that God uses to do extraordinary things. And last week we began looking at the life of a man called Jonah, who decided to run away from God's purpose for his life. God told him to go east and he went as far west as he could. And from that we learned a very important truth that every step away from God's purpose is a step down. And you know, we, we began to understand that God created us for purpose, that we are all created to, to know God and to make him known. That's the general purpose for every single human being. And, and, and the, the crazy thing though is when we hear this, the first thing that most of us think about is how unqualified we are about sharing God with others, about making God known to others. In our minds, we typically have a type of person that God uses. Who's the kind of person in your mind that God uses? You know, who's the kind of person that you would consider that's a called person? Usually we're talking about someone who's really spiritual, right? I mean, somebody who's constantly like praying, you know, somebody who thinks godly thoughts like 24-7. They're always just thinking about how God needs to save children in Afghanistan and such things, you know, things that normal people like you, like you and I, we don't spend our time thinking about. I mean, the person who has, has the right words to say in every situation, they've studied some theology, their marriage works perfectly perfectly, their children are well behaved, their life is in order. In other words, someone who's not like you, someone is, is not what I'm talking about. You know, it's like you're thinking that spiritual person, that called person. But you know, I believe that's why the book of Jonah was written. Uh, because you see, this Jonah is this guy who does completely the opposite of what God wants him to do. But yet somehow God still chooses to work through him. What a great encouragement for us all. And so today I want to talk about the kind of people that God chooses, kind of people that God uses, uh, the kind of people that God calls, uh, who are the called people. And uh, I want to see is, as I speak whether you identify with any of the people that we'll talk about. Uh, there, there, there's a, there are categories of people that God uh, calls. And I'm going to, as I read Jonah, Jonah chapter 2, I see different things there that just speak to me about the kind of people that God uses, the kind of people that God calls. And so the first one is God calls people who've messed up. God calls people who've messed up. Uh, Jonah says, from inside the fish, it says, Jonah prayed to the Lord his God. And he said, in my distress, I called to the Lord and he answered me. I mean, Jonah was the least likely suspect for a guy that God would ever want to use again. I mean, he was a rebellious prophet. The guy had brought shame to the name of God. I mean, he had just done his own things. He'd, he'd embarrass God in front of guys who are not godly. I mean, he had just, God had told him to go east, he had gone west. But despite his foolishness, when he reached out to God, the Bible says God heard him. God still answered him. You see, God specializes in using people who've messed up big time. 
Now, I love the fact that there's no perfect person in the Bible. You know, have you ever noticed that? Apart from Jesus, of course. I mean, Abraham, he's known as God's friend, the friend of God. You know that song, I am a friend of God. I mean, that's Abraham, isn't it? That's a guy who, who gave us that title. But this is the same guy who disowned his wife when she was in danger. And then after that, he slept with a maid. <laughs> Gosh, I mean, that's a friend of God. It's like, what? Really? And then you hear about a guy called David who was like the man after God's heart. But this is a guy who betrayed one of his most loyal friends by sleeping with his wife and then killed the man to cover up the affair. How's that for a man after God's own heart? I mean, Paul, the great apostle that God used to write over half the New Testament, the guy was so impatient that when a young intern called John Mark didn't deliver at work, <laughs> the guy fired him on the spot. <laughs> I mean, he was, so, so, he was such a harsh boss. Uh, thank God for a merciful man called Barnabas who took John Mark under his wing and mentored him, and that's why today we have the book called The Gospel of Mark. No thanks to Paul. If it was left to Paul, there'd be no gospel of Mark because the guy would have been fired and just completely finished. I mean, all these so-called saints were messed up people. They are messed up people. Listen, if God could use them, he can use me. If God could use them, he can use you. You see, God doesn't choose the qualified. He qualifies the chosen. And so that's the first kind of people that I'm seeing in this scripture that God uses. Number two, the second type of people, uh, please, please make note of these types of people and see if you identify with any of them or you know people who fit into these categories. God calls failures. God calls failures. Uh, verse 2, Jonah writes, From deep in the realm of the dead I called for help and you listened to my cry. You see the word that Jonah uses, uh, it's a, the realm of the dead. In Hebrew the word is shoal. And Sheol was the place of the dead. Its inhabitants were cut off from God. They were remembered by God no more. And Jonah basically had messed up his life so badly, he, had ex he was now experiencing what it fe feels like to be, to be cut off from God. He was in the darkest place he had ever been. And he says, in this dark place, the depths of the grave, the place of the dead, I called for help. And he said, you listen to my cry. You see, many of us have failed in our life assignment. But God calls us anyway. God loves broken vessels. If you feel like a failure, maybe you failed in school. Maybe you failed in your marriage. Maybe you failed in your parenting. Maybe you failed in your business. And, 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 and you feel like you're a failure. Then let me just tell you, you're a great candidate for God to use. If you feel like, who am I that God can use a person like me? Then you're qualified to be one of those that are called. Because you see, God doesn't choose the qualified. He qualifies the chosen. He chooses you, and then he qualifies you. Is that an amazing thing about God? I mean, this is, this is a God we serve. Number three, third category, God calls people who've been rejected. God calls people who've been rejected. I, I, I look at what Jonah says in verse four. He says, I've been banished from your sight, yet I will look again towards your holy temple. I mean, it's, it's interesting because Jonah had tried to run away from God's purpose, but he had only managed to run away from God's peace. He had been cut off. He, he, he was remembering the peace, the joy of God's presence, but he, and he was missing it. He knew he deserved judgment, but he also knew that God's love and mercy endure forever. God still loved him. Somehow, somehow God still loved him. And like the prodigal son, Jonah decided to come back home. He says, I will look back towards your holy temple. Jonah recommitted his life back to God. Maybe he wondered, can God really accept me back after all I've done? Can God still use me? He may not have known for sure, but he had nowhere else to go, and so he decided to come back to God. Now, well, we're not even going to discuss the whole fact that this whole conversation is happening in the stomach of a fish. Like, like some people ask, you know, scientifically, is this pos even possible? And I mean, for me, who, who, my background is in science, whenever people ask me questions like that, I say, listen, I mean, for you to try and use science to decide whether a miracle is possible or not tells me you don't understand what a miracle is. Because a miracle is, is, is the work of a, the, the being that created science and created the rules of nature. 
And if he created the rules of nature, this being created the rules of nature, then he, or, or, or this being, has the power to transcend the rules of nature. So I don't spend a lot of time wondering how people have conversations in the, in the belly of a fish. Uh, I, I read it and it says, okay, if God says he did it, he can do it. Uh, if he really is God, he should be able to do it. But, but, but you know, here's the thing. This guy here, I mean, he's talking, this is, this is a man who's, 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 who's done it all. I mean, some people here who are listening to this, you're in a place where you've gone through a rough breakup. You've been rejected. Maybe you've even gone through a divorce. You are left it. Somebody was fired from work. You are removed. You're, you're rejected by your parents or your family members. Your friends kicked you out of the WhatsApp group. But I have news for you. Your rejection is your redirection. I love what the Apostle Paul wrote to the, to the Christians in the city of Corinth. He says in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 26, he says, Brothers, think of who you are. Sisters, think of who you are when you are called. Not many of you are wise by human standards. Not many of you are influential. Not many of you are of noble birth. But listen, this is what he says to them. He's, and he's not insulting them. He's just telling them the facts. He says, God chose the foolish things of this world. To shame the wise. God chose the weak things of this world to shame the strong. God chose the lowly things of this world and the despised things, the things that are not, to nullify the things that are so that no one may boast before him. Listen, God isn't looking for people who fit in. He's not looking for those people who everybody uh, uh, affirms and approves of. God loves to use people whom others consider failures. God loves to use people whom others have rejected. God doesn't choose the qualified. Instead, he qualifies the chosen. Am I speaking to somebody in the house today? Hey, some of us have given up. We think God has given up on us. But listen, the fact that you're rejected could be the very reason that God has chosen you. Then the fourth one I want to speak about is God calls people who are down and out. God calls people who are down and out. Verse 5. It tells us that the engulfing water threatened me. This is Jonah talking, his testimony. The deep surrounded me. Seaweed was wrapped around my head. To the roots of the mountains I sank down. The earth beneath me barred me in forever. But you, Lord my God, you brought my life up from the pit. You see, to all intents and purposes, Jonah's life was over. He was the lowliest of the low. Nobody could ever expect anything good from him again. It seemed there was no hope that anything good could ever come out of his life. But listen, this is what he says. God brought his life up from the pit. And that's the God we serve. You see, it doesn't matter how badly you're doing. It doesn't matter what others say about you. It doesn't matter that you lost your job and your business went down. God specializes in using people who are down and out. Don't let feelings of unworthiness keep you from fulfilling your call. In fact, you'll be surprised that right now when you're down is the time God can use you the best. Why? Because at the end, all glory goes to him. Sometimes when God uses us and things are going well, you'll be like, God chose me because, my goodness, I was succeeding. I was top of my class. And we share the glory. We take the glory that rightfully belongs to God. So this place you're in, the down and out place you're in right now, qualifies you for God to use you. I love that about Jonah. You'll be surprised that those feelings of being unworthy are the ones that will actually open the door to your ministry. Anyone who feels worthy of a call is not worthy of that call at all. Let me just tell you this. I mean, John the Baptist, I love the fact that even though, I mean, when, when he came uh, and he, say, he says, I'm not even worthy to untie the laces of Jesus. And, and this is a guy who God chose to go, before, to, to, to go before God and make a way for him. That unworthiness could be the very reason, that feeling of unworthiness could be the very reason that God chooses a person like you. And you know, it's interesting because uh, when, when John was later asked uh, by his disciples, how come Jesus is doing great things? How come, how come he's shining more than you? John 3.30, he says, he must become greater. I must become less. John knew, my, my goodness, this thing has nothing to do. There's, there's no gift of mine that God has used here. There's nothing I came with. God is using me despite of me. There's a humility that comes because he understands I'm not worthy to be the one God uses. Every authentic minister has felt at one point or the other that I don't deserve the calling. But listen to me, my friends. God doesn't choose the qualified. Instead, he qualifies the chosen. Number five. The last category, God calls people who are not believable. <laughs> God calls people who are not believable. Jonah says something very interesting. He says, those who cling to worthless idols turn away from God's love for them. But I, with shouts of grateful praise, will sacrifice to you 
what I have vowed I will make good. I will say salvation comes from the Lord. I mean, the, the guy is in the belly of a fish for heaven's sake. I mean, he's lost all credibility. He's messed up his life. Even non-believers have mocked him. And yet, despite all this, Jonah still commits himself to God and says, God, if you can use anyone, you can use me. Uh, even though people don't believe, even though I've lost all credibility, Lord, if there's anyone you want to use, I'm here. You can use me. And when he committed himself to follow God's purpose and to trust God to help him, and in the story going forward, we start to see that God used him big time to change the greatest nation of his time. You know, there are many people who might write you off because of your past. They're so focused on who you used to be that they can't see who God has made you to be. I don't know if you have people like those. They've put you in a box. They can't believe you can change. And sometimes the most unbelieving people are your immediate family and friends. But God specializes in using people who are not believable. I remember one time in my life when I uh, decided to follow Jesus and then I started working in church as an intern. And I, I, I don't know if you've ever heard me say, share this story, but there's a girl who came in and, 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 and I was on duty that day so when they asked for the pastor on duty I came and I sat in front of her I didn't recognize who she was uh, actually no she didn't recognize who I was I, I recognized her immediately as one of the girls that I used to hang out with when I was in high school uh, and, 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 and we used to party and do all these crazy things but of course she didn't recognize me because that's not who she was expecting to find in a pastor's office so uh, she began to tell me all her issues and she was going through some major stuff and I just realized my goodness she didn't even know who I am so I said hey Anne don't you remember me this is who I am and she stopped short in what she was doing and then she started laughing like she laughed and she hysterical laughter like she laughed like what the, like she laughed 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 and then after that in the middle of the laughter she started crying and then she just cried and cried and I was like what is going on I'm so confused and then she told me can you just pray for me to get saved and I said what do you mean pray for you to get saved she said if God can save a guy like you then even me, I can get saved. I mean, talk about somebody who is not believable. I was not a believable person. I mean, I was one of those insecure uh, people in high school and college who just thought I was so cool. But among, I mean, I was one of those kids, when I think about it, I'm like, how among all the children in my extended family did God choose me to be the pastor? Like, I'm the least qualified. There's so many more qualified people than myself when you think about it from a human standard. And let me just say, like, like me, some of you are the least credible people that God could have chosen. I mean, when you think about all the other candidates God could have chosen before he got to you, uh, somehow you're the one he decided he, you're go he's going to reveal himself to you and you will know him. Listen, none of what people think matters in God's economy. Uh, God doesn't choose the qualified. He qualifies the chosen. That's why you're here. Now, I love what Jesus is quoted as having said in Matthew chapter 22, verse 14. And it says, in the New Living Translation, it says, for many are called, but few are chosen. You know, I really believe this, this saying that Jesus was saying. It, it, it seems contradictory. It's like, many are called, few are chosen. What does that mean? I really believe that many are called, it, uh, like, like God's call goes to all his children, anybody who knows him. But few are chosen. Why? Because only few people accept the call. So God has called many. But many don't bother to answer his call, especially the educated, the wealthy, the busy. You see, the nature of human beings is to be proud. Many times we look humble, but it's because we have no money. <laughs> Wait until you get money. And then you're last seen heading as far from God's work as possibly you can. You know those busy people. It's like, you know how busy I am? I mean, even on Sundays I'm resting. I, how do you expect me in church? It's like we just get busy. And, and you know, the funny thing is that this same verse in the, the, the Passion Translation, Matthew 23, 14, it's, it reads, For everyone is invited to enter in, but few respond in excellence. Few respond in excellence. You see, God is joining us, is inviting us to join the greatest rescue mission that has ever been in the history of this world. He's inviting us to do the work of ministry to reconcile lost sons and daughters back to him. He's inviting us to know him and to make him known. But we need to choose to be among those few who respond in excellence. Many are called, but very few will respond. And this is what the scripture is telling us. My prayer is that you will be one of those who responds. I will be one of those who responds to God's call to know him and to make him known. Listen, whether you're a manager or a CEO, whether you're a stay-at-home mom or a student, God has called you. He's called you and he's qualified you. And he wants to put his anointing on you so that you can serve his kingdom and bring people back to him. Now, some of you are watching this 
You've been saved many years, over 20 years, like myself. Others have been saved, but not as long. Some of you just gave your life to Christ very recently, and I know that there are also people here who have not yet made that commitment to give your life to Christ. But allow me to say this. Never been intimidated by the number of years a person has been saved. <laughs> it's not how long you've been saved that counts, because some of us have been believers for years, but our hearts are very far from where God wants them to be. Like Jonah, we've fallen away from our purpose. We know how to pray beautiful prayers. Uh, we look the part, but deep inside, our love for God is a shadow of what it used to be. And I believe that this message is for you. It's for every one of us. That God is more concerned about the state of your heart than about what you can do for him. He wants to reignite your passion for him, your love for him, and your love for his mission. And maybe, and my prayer is for those of you who've, uh, who just got saved recently, that you will always live a life that is characterized by a passionate pursuit for God and his purpose for you. And for those of you who haven't made that decision yet to follow Jesus, I want to let you know that whatever your aspiration, whatever your ambition, you're here on earth ultimately to live a life of purpose. And that purpose is to know God and to make him known. So stop trying to manage your life. Give it back to the one who gave it to you. Choose to live a life whose highest priority is God's priority for you because God doesn't choose the qualified. Instead, he qualifies the chosen. Now, I love how Jonah ends his prayer. At the end of verse 9, he says, What I vowed I will make good, and I will say, Salvation comes from the Lord. Joshua promise, uh, Jonah promises to serve God in whatever way God wants. He promises to know God and to make him known. And all of who he was, all of what he had, was now going to be available as a tool to accomplish God's purpose. Before he had served on his own terms, but now he was committing himself to serve on God's terms. And I believe this is where God wants all of us to be today. Where we'll do anything, stop anything, go anywhere to live out God's ultimate purpose for us, to know him and to make him known. No more my car, my job, my time, my house, my family. No. That we understand that it's God's car, God's job, God's time, God's house, God's family. That every gift God has given us is a tool that we can use to be a blessing, to make him known to others. I want to say, don't wait till you're older to serve God. Don't wait until you have money to serve God. If you, if you die before serving God, you'll have failed in your assignment. There's nothing you're here that you're going to do on earth that is as important as this assignment to know God and to make him known. Listen, God doesn't choose the qualified. He qualifies the chosen. And so I want to end by asking you to get your phone out or that piece of paper and a pen, just like we did last time. Last week I asked you to write the names of five people that don't know Jesus, that are in your life, that you're going to join me, uh, we're going to join with in praying for this month. Today I want you to write another list of five things. And I want you to write five gifts that God has given you, five things that you really love about your life. Five, it could be possessions, it could be gifts, like gifts you have, the things you're good at. It could be relationships. What are five things, five gifts that God has really given you that you love about your life? And as you write those things, the reason I'm asking you to write them is because I want you to understand that these are tools that God has given you. These are things that God has given you to serve him, that you would know him and you would make him known. So some of you are going to write your car. Some of you, it's a house that you live in. Some of you, it's a job that you have. Some of you, it's your bank account, whatever it is. But God is, this, these are your gifts that God has given you to bless others. And I believe that God wants a connection between those two lists. That somehow you're going to begin to understand that God gave you the gifts to serve his people. To know him and to make him known. So write those things because I want us to pray for them and dedicate them to God. That God will use them, the gifts he's given you, to bless the people in your life who don't know him. And so if you're, writ if you're writing that list, I hope you've written at least two names, uh, two, two gifts. Uh, you can continue uh, going ahead as we continue. But I want to pray for us in conclusion. I believe that God is here in the house and he wants to bless us. And you know, I believe that the gifts God has given you, he's going to multiply them. That God is going to bless the, 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 In the scripture, God speaks to Abraham. He says, I'm blessing you so you can be a blessing. And I believe even as we write these gifts, that these are things we're giving to God and dedicating to him, that God will even bless you more in them, that you can overflow in every good work. This is what his word says. 
And so I want to pray for us right now as we come to the end of our service. Father, I thank you for every single believer, every single person who knows you, who's listening to my word this morning, to your word this morning. I pray for every person who doesn't yet know you, but is, is seeking you and is, is in your house today because they want to hear your word as well. And Father, I thank you that, Lord, you've blessed us. You've given us things. You've given us blessings. Blessed us so that we can be a blessing. Lord, I thank you that, Father, you don't expect us to use things we don't have. You qualify us with the things you've already given us to become useful to blessing others around us. And so right now, we dedicate these gifts that we've written down, the things you've given us, our relationships, our aspirations, our gifts, our strengths. We dedicate them to you, our health. And I pray that, Lord, for all of us, that these things will become useful to our main mission, the reason we're here on earth, to know you and to make you known. I pray that, Lord, you'd give us an opportunity to use that car, to use that job, to use that house, to use that relationship, to bless people around us who don't know you. I pray that, Lord, we'll be known as a source of blessing, like, like Jonah. I pray that for every single one of us who'll be able to say, what I've vowed, I'll make good. I will sacrifice to you because salvation comes from the Lord. I will proclaim that salvation comes from the Lord. And I pray that, Lord, our blessings, our possessions will proclaim to the world around us that salvation comes from God. Cause us to be a blessing to those around us. And Lord, I pray that you would break our hearts with the things that break your heart. As I think about the list of people that we wrote who don't know you, I pray that, Lord, even this, this, uh, this, this coming week, you'd give us the grace to, to reach out to them, to be a blessing to them, to find ways to pray for them, that we'll, we'll trust you to give us ideas, divine ideas, of how we can use the blessings you've given us to be a blessing to those who need you. That, Lord, in some way we can begin to point them back to you. And so, Lord, I just want to thank you for this church. Lord, I pray that you would ignite our hearts with the things that ignite your heart. Give us a passionate desire to see many people in our lives come to know you. And I pray that around our lives, around us, there will be fruitfulness as people come back to you. And Lord, again, I just pray for anybody who doesn't yet know you as Lord and Savior. I pray that, Lord, you'd begin to just stir our hearts as well. Lord, to this understanding that you made us for purpose, that you made us for more, and that none of us would walk out of this place without coming back to you, giving our lives to you, that we may live the purpose you've called us to. And so, Lord, we love you, we bless you, we thank you, and we honor you. And all these things we pray, believing and trusting in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus. And God's people say it together. Amen. Amen.